What's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're joining me for the first time, my name is Prophet Ene and I'm a life a relationship coach. I help young people to build intentional relationship that leads to a godly marriage. So um, in today's video, we'll be talking about something that is of great concern to me recently. Um, just a few weeks ago, some I think someone, a man died and um, they had to share his wealth or the family started dragging the man's property with the wife. And this thing has been something that has been happening a lot in our society, especially in Africa where I'm from, um, Nigeria. So a lot of people tend to start dragging property with the wife of a deceased man. So um, it seems like they wait for the man to die and then they come in as in-laws or they come in as brothers and siblings and want to come and claim what the man has. And in a lot of situations, um, it has been in such a way that even um, when they take everything from these women, the wives of these men who have died, they don't leave anything for the woman to even train the children with. They don't even leave anything for the woman. And it's been a serious concern. And people today um, find it difficult to go into marriages or get married to the love of their life because they don't want to experience that and sometimes women even before they die if sometimes women even before their husband die they start holding well so that in case the family comes they will have something to fall back on well um i really want to take us back to the beginning because this is like a major concern to me because it seems like the people who do this they don't really understand what marriage is all about and I want to believe that anybody who does this, any family who does this, who tries to um, fight over a dead man's property with the wife of the man, they, I don't think they are Christians, they are not believers because, like I always say, it's, it's about the biblical standards, it's about the institution of marriage, it's about how this marriage thing, all these things came to be. And if we dig deep into the word of God, we will see that what the idea of marriage that a lot of people have today is far different from what it's what it was designed to be we have a lot of people today who just go into marriage for different reasons some because of their selfish desire to um have somebody in their lives some because they are looking for somebody to help them stand financially so because they just want to have sex a lot of people have a lot of toxic reasons why they go into marriage that's why we see marriages today, two years into the marriage is already heading towards divorce and the rest. So I would really like to um, talk about this thing, like try to as much as possible to explain this concept of two people becoming one, because I believe it will go a long way. It will really go a long way to helping a lot of people who have desires to get married to do it the right way. If you're not a Christian and you're watching this, well, I will advise you to keep watching and advise you to give your life to Christ. And then, but I would also like you to know that um, this is the right thing to do, but then you are not obligated to do it because you're not a member of the family. But then, if you're a member of the family and you have this mindset of um, my wife is an external part of me, because the way they see, they feel like, their family is the closest person to them and their wife is someone coming from a different family to come and drag something that their brother owns or things that... There are even men who do this. Like, I'm not even talking about just the family. There are men who believe that their wife is just another human being coming into their life and when they are done with her, they dispose her or what. Like, they don't see their partner as themselves the way the Bible describes it. So where are we going to start today to look at this so we have to go back to the very beginning where it all starts we have to go back to the very beginning where it all starts so in the book of genesis chapter 2 verse 24 um i will start from verse 21 and it says so the lord god caused man to fall into a deep sleep while the man slept the lord god took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening then the lord god made woman from the rib and he brought her to the man at last, the man exclaimed, This one is bone of my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man. 
this explains i want you guys to pay attention to this part it says this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife uh, uh, and his father says and the two are united into one there are two points here there are two crucial points here two crucial key points here the first one is that a man leaves the father and mother it's kind of um, a disconnection from your parents it's not like um, you forget about your family you forget about where you're coming from but it means that you are detaching yourself from a particular um, source or from a particular thing and you are now attaching yourself to another thing Say, a man will have to leave the father and the mother and be joined to the wife and the two shall become one so we know um, um when we have like a socket and a plug for a, a, a socket and a plug there is a hole on the socket and there is a plug which has um pins or, so, or things like that and when you plug out when you remove the plug from the socket you can see a hole and when they are joined together, when you put it back on, that's a connection. They are joined together and they become one. That's how they function as one. I don't know if you're getting this. That's how they function as one. So when you detach it, they stop functioning as one. So what the Bible is trying to say that when a man and woman come together, they are joined together, they are plucked together and they become one. What affects the first person affects the second person. And in Genesis, this is not the only place um, the Bible mentioned of this. The Bible also talked about it in Matthew chapter 19, verse 4 to 6. It, there are so many places in the Bible where this word, this particular word said, where a man shall leave the father and the mother and be joined to the wife, and they shall become one. And he said, what God has joined together, let no person, let no man, let no woman put asunder. The concept of two becoming one is something that a lot of people don't understand today. It's something that a lot of people still find very, very strange. And I really want us to understand this thing very well. The Bible is trying to make you understand that when you decide to get married, you are becoming a part of someone else. Even the Bible said, um, he who gives himself his body to a harlot is becoming one with the person. That means there is a joining. There is a oneness. In mathematics, we know that one plus one is two. But when it comes to the marriage institution, one plus one is not equal to two. One plus one is equal to one. What this means is that one plus one, that's you have to be whole before you come into the institution of marriage. I know a lot of people out there, um, they are not whole. That's why when they get into marriage, they start finding it very, very difficult to sustain the marriage. They start finding it very, very difficult to sustain the marriage because the ideology they have about marriage is wrong. You're supposed to be a person of your own. You're supposed to have a life of your own. You're supposed to be full of yourself. That's discover your purpose. You're living your purpose. You know what you're supposed to be doing in life. You're living the life God has designed for you to live. And then your partner who is coming to your life should be of the same um, life. They have their own life, have something working for them. Then when two of you come together, both of you become one. You integrate what each of you is coming into the marriage union with and you become one. So it gets to a point, instead of saying, my this my that why are you touching my this and my that it becomes ours so you change from a singular um pronoun to a plural pronoun where you don't look at your partner as the other person you look at your partner as yourself i want to really show something i want to really show something let's go to the book of ephesians let's go to the book of ephesians for a moment Let's go to the book of Ephesians. The Bible said in Ephesians chapter 5, when it was dis um, describing um, submission between man and woman. Let's look at that very, very quickly. It says, um, um, let's, let me read from verse 25. Okay, let me start from verse 22. It said, for wife, this means submit to your husband as to the Lord. For husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of the body the church as the church submits to christ so your wives should submit to your husband in everything and he went further to say 
for husband, this means love your wife just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husband ought to love their wife as they love their own bodies. This is what I want to bring out from here. He said, husband ought to love their wife as they love their own bodies. What? What? What is the mystery? Like, if you have to love your wife like the way you love your own body, that means you won't do anything to hurt your wife because you know that hurting your wife means that you're hurting yourself. So, okay, let's, let, let's read on. Let's read on. He said, for a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. That means if you are not loving your wife, if you are not caring for your wife, if you are not treating your wife the way she is ought to be treated, then you are not showing love to yourself. That means it's just like you are taking care of your hands and you are ignoring your legs. You are ignoring your hands, your, your eyes, your nose. You are, you are not washing your hair. You are not taking care of some other parts of it. That's the way it's trying to say that if you are not showing love to some part of your body, that means you don't love your body. So if you are not taking care of your wife, that means you don't love your wife. That means there is a connection there. There is a connection. I need you guys to get this. He said, no one hates his own body but feeds and cares for it, just as Christ cares for the church and we all are members of the body. Guys, I need you to catch this. I need you to catch this. See, you don't go into the marriage institution looking at yourself as a different person. The moment you say, I do, on the altar, that means, the moment you say the vow, that means you are committing yourself to become full flesh and blood and soul with some other person so when you guys are saying if a woman if a man gets married and he dies he should leave the property to his family he should give it to the father he should give it to the brothers then the brothers and the siblings should now come and take care of the wife and the child. it doesn't make any sense it makes no sense because this means that this wife this man wasn't looking at the wife as part of him and this even extends to where a husband, um, a wife, a wife and the mother, a man, a man has to choose between the mother and the wife. It's so sad that in our generation today, these things are still issues. Just because we have refused to follow the biblical instruction of how to um, make our marriages work. If you are ready, if, if you think you want to get married, you should be coming to that point where you understand that I am my wife, I am my husband, we are one. And we are supposed to be doing things together. It's not a competition, it's more of a, um, a teamwork. So it's both of you against the ideologies of the world. It's both of you against the world, whatever the external forces are. It is both of you fighting against those things. It is not both of you fighting against each other. We have a lot of marriages today that they are cat and dog. They're always fighting. They're always insulting. Them. They're always abusing themselves. That is because they don't love themselves first. They don't know who they are first. And they got into marriage and they are now being abused. They are now abusing themselves. If you really want to get it right in your marriage, you need to start understanding that the moment you get married, the moment you become one, the moment you take that vow in the altar, the moment you say, I do, you are saying, I am dropping everything every other thing and becoming one with you it is both of us against the world i don't know if you are catching this i don't know if you are catching this i just really wish that somebody out there is getting this it means both of you against the world so when you die nobody's praying for death but when you die as a man you shouldn't be thinking about leaving your properties to your family Yes, if you want to help your family, help your family when you are still alive. Give them everything you want to give to them. Sponsor their education, sponsor their feeding, do whatever you want to do for your family. But not when you die, you now leave your wife a part of you to suffer. Because a lot of families who are not Christian families, when they get hold of this world, when they start fighting for these properties, they tend to leave the woman and the children hopeless. They tend to make them to suffer. They tend to ignore their needs. It's unfair. 
it's unfair to your body. Yes, I'm calling, I'm calling her your body. Because like we have seen now, the Bible said that both of you are one. Nobody treats himself. Nobody um, takes care of one part of himself and leaves the other. Nobody hates his body and all those stuff. So both of you are one. So if you are leaving your wife to the mercy of your family members, then, bro, you're not ready for this marriage stuff. You're not. You are not. We need to come to that point that we have to start making the Bible our standard for marriage. Two have become one, not two are two separate persons. So you don't see your wife as is somebody coming from another family to come and fight your family or something like that. So because let's paint this picture. You want to leave the property to your father. You want to leave your property to your mother, to your brother. Remember that your mother is from another family. If you want to put it that way, your mother is from another family, but your dad took care of your mother. So just imagine, just sometimes when, you, when we want to make this decision, it's important that we put ourselves in different scenarios, put ourselves in different positions, looking at it from different perspective. What if you are the woman in this case, for instance, will you be happy that your husband died and took everything and left it for the family instead of you? Whatever she decides to do with the money in the long run, if she decides to get married, remarry, and become one with another man after you have gone, that shouldn't be a problem to you. If you want to help your family, help your family so well when you are alive, that they will have to be depending on what you'll be leaving behind for your wife. It's so selfish that you are not taking care of your family right now. You're not caring for your sibling. They will ask you for something and you don't want to do it for them. Or they will ask you for something that you are trying to mise what you are doing for them and all those stuff. You're not taking care of your parents. And when you finally die, you don't want to leave everything for them. How does it make sense? Does it make sense in any way? Does it? Does it? Does it? So, we need to come to that point where we understand that there is more to this marriage thing than trying to be selfish. I know in our world today, a lot of people are so selfish, so, 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 so selfish. We are always looking for what to take, what to benefit, not necessarily what to give. But marriage, like I've always said, is about giving. It's about giving yourself to your partner, giving your best to your partner, ensuring that you love your partner the way you love yourself. The Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. If the Bible can tell us to love our neighbors as ourselves, what do you think the Bible will now say when it comes to loving your partner, loving the wife of your youth? I don't know if you're getting this, but I need us to come to that point where we understand that there is more. There is more. There is more. You cannot be settling for less. You cannot be um, doing marriage the way the world thinks you should do marriage. Let's go back to the foundation. Let's go back to the foundation. Let's go back to the word of God, where it defined what marriage should be, where it defined how we should do marriage. What God has joined together, let no man put us under. Even in death, your wife should be still be proud of having you as a husband, not regretting ever having you as a husband. And this goes the other way around too, to women. Even, even if you're the one to die before your husband, we're not praying for deaths, remember. But even if these things happen, your partner should be able to live on knowing that they believe in you, trust in you, and they, they, that whatever legacy you left for them, they live with it for the rest of their life, even in their new marriages, if they decide to remarry. Not leaving them in a situation that way they will be living in regrets. After 5, 10, 50 years or 20 years of marriage bliss, then when you die, they start living in abject poverty or they start living in regrets because you decided to make a, that a last minute decision that destroys almost everything both of you have been building for years. We need to wake up, man. We need to wake up, bro. We need to wake up and do the right thing. The concept of two becoming one is a mystery. It's a mystery. It's a deep mystery which I can't even alone demystify it in this video but i've tried my best because i know that someone needs to hear this a man out there needs to hear this a man out there needs to hear this you build with your wife it is not a competition it's a game of complementing each other it's a union of complementing each other it's a union of bringing what you can into the union and helping each other to grow to become a better version of yourself some people will say the woman has nothing to bring to the table if she's not bringing anything to the table when you are married, what are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? 
and how are you trying to help her to become the best version of herself so that she can be able to bring something to them you married her right have your reasons for marrying her then you should be able to build her you should be able to nurture her to grow so this would make me say everything i'm saying right now is to help someone out there and rounding up this i want to say this see if you're a lady out there if you're a man out there this is why it's important you have these discussions before you get married it's important that you have these conversations with whoever you intend to get married to go for premarital counseling talk about these critical things it's not just about the ice cream that you lick after licking the ice cream the coldness of the ice cream will block, block your brain <laughs> <laughs> so it's not about that you should be talking about important things you should know the man's perspective about family you should know what he thinks about two becoming one is he seeing you just as an acquired property or is he seeing you as a part of him does he believe that a woman is just there to satisfy the man and not about meeting each other's need you need to be having these important discussions in your relationship before you even think of getting married you need to understand where they are coming from. You need to understand their ideologies about life. You need to understand what they think about family. You need to understand their relationship with their parents and everything. Talk about this essential thing. It's very, very important. Don't just go there going on dates, talking about your best color, your best musicians. This thing don't sustain your marriage. This thing don't sustain your union. It's better you are aware of what you are going in for before you go in. If you see that a man has this ideology, sometimes you don't even need to be direct with this question. It could come as a conversation in a way where you kind of twist the question in such a way that they give up this information without even knowing. Because one thing about this is that some people might decide to play smart and they try to dodge these questions or try to pick offense when you ask this question. There is always going to be a way to ask this question indirectly and they will give up those information to you and you know what to do. So it's important, guys, it's very, very important that you talk about this thing, that you go in depth into this thing. The concept of two becoming one is something that we need to adopt and live by. Because both of you are here to make this marriage work, not here to fight each other. So I believe this video has really impacted you. I know it's a long one. But then I have to explain this thing in such a way that you have to understand it. So please do well to um, subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this video. Do well to hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified the next time I'll be uploading video. Very soon I'll start bringing guests into this show. We'll be having conversations, those difficult conversations. We'll be having them because it's time we start addressing these things in our society. It's time we start tackling this situation that seems like people are avoiding them. It's time to start talking about the truth, what is supposed to be the biblical standards of marriage. It's time. So, um, yeah, one good news is that, yeah, my book is coming out next week, The Love Lessons. Love Lessons. So I want you to grab your copy. You can pre-order, you can get your... So my birthday is coming up on the 17th of this month. That should be next week, Wednesday. <laughs> so... The launching will be on that very day, so I'll be leaving the link to pre-order your copy on the description box, yes. So I'll be leaving the, how you can actually get the book and I believe that it will be a blessing to you. There are so many lessons, there are 50 lessons that will change your life, that will change your relationship, things you need to know and abide by and you will see yourself expressing an awesome life and relationship. So. Thank you guys for staying tuned up to this point. If you made it this far, I believe that today has been a blessing to you, to you, to you. So, um, till next time, catch ya.